Hello everyone, and welcome to my bold and beautiful channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. RJ tells Katie what Poppy asked Luna to hold hidden. Poppy claimed she had no idea how the backpack had arrived there at Luna and Poppy's apartment. But she did disclose that Bill knew about the false claims in Poppy's relationship with Tom. She stated Bill understood it and Poppy needed Luna to grasp it as well. Poppy said she had always assumed Bill was Luna's father, but she still harbors doubts about Tom being right. Poppy said she had brought pizza to her house and seen Tom once again following his water-splashing attack on I.L. Giardino. Luna remembered it and asked whether it had been the concert night. Poppy verified it, stating it occurred when she started handling issues personally. Poppy claimed no role in Tom's death. She meant not to kill Tom but to stop his lies. She had needed Tom to admit that Luna's father was not Tom but Bill. Luna asked Poppy why she hadn't told her after learning she had done the night he passed. Poppy said she was attempting to shield Luna instead of freaking her out over Tom. Poppy feared Tom had left the backpack somewhere Luna might find. Poppy understood simply that Bill was Luna's father. Luna noted that the sole one challenging it had passed death. Poppy said she had none bearing on the deaths. Poppy wanted Luna to rely on their always present Nozawa strength and trust her. Poppy decided to visit Bill after the women hugged. Luna agreed she would be there later. Brooke was greeted at Eric's office by Carter, RJ, and Katie, who also praised her on her outstanding launch. RJ said the line was still popular while Rich said Brooke's bedroom was back and better than ever. Brooke concerned about what she and Rich had missed as well as whether any updates regarding the fatalities at IL Giardino had come around. Later, Carter ended a call with a contact and told everyone there was nothing fresh. The police were investigating all possibilities nonetheless. Not Sheila, Ridge said, and RJ considered who else would go about killing people. Carter surmised there might be accidental overdoses, but Katie said they should all remain under observation until it was confirmed. Suddenly Katie knew she had to be somewhere. Brooke worried about her sister's whereabouts once she left. Carter departed to see Katie. Luna wanting to see RJ sent him a note. Ridge asked his kid to get him some pizza. By himself with Brooke, he asked whether she would also desert him. Brooke said she was in her life, her work, in his embrace just where she was supposed to be. Returns to Luna's residence. RJ arrived and saw Luna seem disturbed. Luna said she never intended to keep anything from him going forward. He asked about events and whether she had acted. She grumbled. Someone else had. She stated she had discovered the backpack there and indicated to it. He did not believe what she had seen inside. Luna handed RJ a letter stack. They belonged, he said, from the dead Tom to Poppy. RJ asked what Tom would have been writing to Poppy about, and Luna said Tom had wrongly introduced himself as her father. P.S. Psycho much? Looking over the letters, RJ asked. RJ knew the reason the circumstances bothered him. Luna said that this had nothing bearing on her discontent. She asked Poppy how the backpack had gotten there. She said she had nothing to do with it. Luna said Poppy confronted Tom that night he passed away. RJ asked Luna what she had to say. Luna thought her mother would never hurt anyone, but she would do whatever necessary to guard her. Though Luna found it hard to believe, she said Tom and Hollis died from drug addiction, something Poppy had a past of. Luna felt driven to believe her when she sobbed. Poppy swore she had nothing to do with it. Luna went afraid out. She said she was sorry dragging RJ into this. He said they had worked things out and hugged her, saying poor kid. Liam grimaced at Bill's residence when Bill told him Will had walked in on Bill and Poppy. Bill claimed that it was not a smart idea to urge Will to embrace Luna so soon following that. Though Bill thought Will would enjoy them after he got to know them, Liam thought it was a touch excessive. Who not loves Poppy and Luna? he asked. Liam asked where Will was. According to Bill, Will was living with his mother and would need some time to come to terms with having a sister. And the fact that her mom is living with you instead of his, remarked Liam. Liam hoped Will would have change of perspective. Bill stated Will would have to since he couldn't stop raving about how much he liked his new life. Having a daughter had changed Bill, Liam noted, and it was lovely to see him content. Bill said it had to do with Poppy. Bill and Poppy were alone kissing later. How had things in the apartment? He asked. 
She said that visiting the apartment brought back her great enjoyment of being with Bill. She wanted him not lost. She wouldn't, he claimed, and he always kept her first priority. Deacon was on the phone at I.L. Giardino, asking a culinary critic to confirm to his readers that the restaurant had received the all-clear. Deacon listened as the critic asked more questions and answered that the most important inquiry should be why it happened. Then Katie walked in, fixed on Deacon like though she were on a mission. Katie wanted answers about the deaths that happened there. Katie asked about Sheila's release and expressed sorrow for Deacon's losses. Deacon wanted no rumors about his wife to exist. About another woman, the new woman in Bill's life, Katie said she felt dubious. Deacon thought Bill had been a fool's to let Katie go, and that she had a problem with Poppy. Katie said she felt uncomfortable about Poppy, who had waited 20 years for a paternity test, not jealous and rather worried. Katie asked Bill why he decided to bring the women inside. RJ showed up nearby to pick his pizza order. He saw Katie questioning Deacon. Deacon left to answer a call, and RJ told Katie he had heard her asking about Tom Star. RJ said he had some facts but Katie had to keep it under wraps. Luna exhibited RJ Tom Star's old knapsack, which included letters from Tom asserting to be Luna's father. Katie wondered whether she was right over Poppy killing Hollis and Tom. Reunite Steffi and Taylor. Ridge and Brooke's secret plan why in our special guests. Spoilers for the bold and the beautiful BNB. For the week of August 12th to 16th reveal that Katie Logan, Heather Tom, has to choose what to do following a startling revelation. Further fueling Katie's concerns is the expectation that Tom stars, Clint Howard, Rucksack still resides at Poppy Nozawa's, Romy Park, apartment. Of course, the apartment building is going to be destroyed, so Katie can find herself in a dangerous situation should she be stuck inside at the most offensive moment. Should Katie find herself buried in the debris, her disappearance could call some questions. But Katie may grab the rucksack and bring the fresh evidence to the police. In any event, Katie will keep believing that Poppy is to blame for Tom and Paul Hollis Hollister's, Hollis W. Chambers, Deaths therefore she will cause additional trouble for Poppy Luna Nozawa, Lisa Yamada, and Bill Spencer, Don Diamant. Following the Global Fashion Summit in Monte Carlo, Brooke Logan, K. Catherine Kelly Lang, and Rich Forrester, Torsten K., will have many reasons to rejoice. Eric Forrester, John McCook, will celebrate the victory with a party at the Forrester Estate, as the Brooks' bedroom relaunch is more than Ridge and Brooke ever anticipated. Part of a unique crossover with the young and the restless, Danny Romilotti, Michael Damian and Christine Blair Laura Lee Bell will be invited to this party and enthusiastically engage in the fun. Conversely, Ridge and Brooke invited Christine and Danny for a different motive. As Danny and Christine walk off their tour together, they will both hear an unexpected pitch. Brooke and Ridge will start a new company venture they think Christine and Danny would be suited for, so Danny and Christine will most likely join. BMB teasers indicate Danny will sing on the crossover episodes, which air August 13th and 14th. Depending on how things go, Taylor Hayes, Rebecca Budig, will fly home from Monaco, where she will meet with Steffi Forrester, Jacqueline McInnes Wood, and maybe crash the Forrester party. Our projections show that Taylor will surely find ways to be visible in Los Angeles, hence we will keep you informed about her LA comeback. The bold and the beautiful spoilers indicate that the week of August 12th to 16th will be full of highs and lows. Hence keep an eye out for all the party fun and any upsetting news.